Hello dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous maxillary first molar. So what we are going to discuss in this short video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of the maxillary deciduous first molar. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth mutation systems. And we are also going to discuss the landmarks that are present on the deciduous maxillary first molar. So please watch this video till the end. So what is the timeline of development of the deciduous maxillary first molar? The first evidence of calcification it begins when the child when the baby is 15 weeks in utero. The enamel it is completed by the age of six months. The tooth it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 16 months and the root it is completed by the age of two and a half years. Around the age of 10 years, this tooth it is exfoliated and the tooth it is replaced by the maxillary first premolar. Or what is the alphabet that is used for this tooth in various tooth notation systems? So in the maxillary first deciduous molar. So this is a second molar and the alphabets, they begin with A. So for the first molar, the number, the alphabet is B for the right maxillary first molar. And for the deciduous left first molar in the maxillary arch, the alphabet is I. Now in the palmar notation system, the alphabets, they begin from the midline. The, the alphabets, they begin from the midline for both for the right and the left side. The alphabets are the same. The only difference is this symbol. This symbol is used for the maxillary quadrant of the right side. And this symbol is used for the maxillary quadrant of the left side. So the alphabet is for the right maxillary first molar is D. And for the deciduous left maxillary first molar, also the alphabet is D. The only difference is this symbol. Now, in the FDI notation system, in the FDI notation system, for the right maxillary first molar, deciduous molar, the number is 54. Here, the 5, ind it indicates that it is a right quadrant of the maxillary arch and four indicate that it is a first deciduous molar. Similarly, on the left side, the number is six, four. Here, the six, it indicate that it is a maxillary quadrant of the left side, and four, it indicates the tooth number. Now, what are the distinguishing features or what are the important features of this tooth from the buccal aspect? So, from the buccal aspect, the widest measurement is at the contact areas. So the tooth, it is wider, mesiodistally at the contact areas, where at the cervical portion of the crown, mesiodistal width is the narrowest. It's very narrow uh, at the cervical area. Overall, um, unlike the permanent molars, the buccal surface, it is smooth and very less uh, evidence of the developmental grooves are there on the buccal side. There are three roots. This is the mesial root. This is the distal root. And this is a lingual root, sometimes referred, also referred as the palatal root. So there are three roots, mesial, distal and lingual root. So the roots, they are cylinder and they are long and they are widely separated. So you can see the roots, they are widely separated, they are long and they are cylinder in shape. So among these three roots, uh, this is the distal root and the distal root, it is shorter than the mesial root. Now, the division of these roots. So the division of the roots, they begin just below the uh, cemento enamel junction. So this portion is the root trunk. So the root trunk in the deciduous dentition, it is not 
well developed so the roots they immediately divide and uh, the root trunk it immediately divides into three roots and then same for the mandibular arch while in the permanent dentition the root trunk is quite well developed now uh, from the lingual aspect the crown it converges towards the lingual side so the mesiodistal width the mesiodistal width it is less on the lingual side so the part of the mesial side of the tooth and part of the distal side they are visible from the lingual aspect this cusp is the mesiolingual cusp so the mesiolingual cusp is the most prominent cusp while the distolingual cusp it is short and it is rounded sometimes the distolingual cusp it is missing so in that case only three cusp type is present in which there is one lingual cusp and there are two buccal cusp now among uh, from the lingual aspect also the three roots they are visible mesial distal and lingual and among these three roots the lingual root is the largest one, larger one from the mesial aspect, the mesiolingual cusp, it is longer and sharper than the mesiobuccal cusp. So mesiolingual cusp, it is longer. So this is the mesiolingual cusp. So this cusp is larger and it is sharper than the mesiobuccal cusp. This is the mesial marginal ridge. Now, if you look at the buccal surface of the crown, there is a pronounced convexity in this area. This convexity is present on the buccal side at the cervical third of the crown. So this is the cervical third of the crown. So a marked convexity is there. This is the cervical line or the cementoenamel junction and the cervical line it show curvature towards the occlusal surface. Now the lingual root. Initially, after the division from the root trunk, the lingual root, it extends lingually and very prominently it extends towards the lingual side. Lingual root then curves sharply in a buccal direction above the middle third. So above the middle third, it again it curves, now it curves sharply towards the buccal side. So from the distal side, the crown it is it is narrow. So the buccal lingual width of the crown it is narrow on the distal side. So you can see part of the buccal aspect and the lingual aspect from the distal distal side. So this cusp is the distal buccal cusp. So the distal buccal cusp it is long and sharp as compared to the distolingual cusp which is small and rounded so in the background you can see the mesio mesiolingual and the mesiobuccal cusps as well this is the cervical line and the cervical line extend nearly straight from the buccal side towards the lingual side and the curvature it is very less if you compare it with the curvature of the mesial side that is present on the mesial side in addition to these the distal root and the lingual root the buccal surface and apex of the mesiobuccal root it is also visible so the buccal surface and the apical area they are visible of the mesiobuccal root, they are visible from the distal aspect. From the occlusal aspect, when you look at the occlusal aspect, the crown, it basically, it converges towards the lingual side. So the crown, it basically, it converges towards the, towards the lingual side. So the width, compare the mesiodistal width from the buccal side is more than the mesiodistal width from the lingual side. The crown, it also, in addition to the lingual convergence, the crown, it also converge on the distal side. So the distal side, the crown, it is 
the dimensions it is less as compared to the dimensions the buccolingual dimensions on the mesial side now this is the occlusal surface and this central area it contain a fossa and this fossa is known as the central fossa so central fossa is present somewhere over in this area so this area is the central fossa in addition to the central fossa there are some other fossa fossae as well for example this fossa is the is the mesial triangular fossa a very small fossa is present in this area another triangular fossa and this is known as the the distal triangular fossa so this is the central fossa this is the mesial triangular fossa and this is the distal triangular fossa this is the central developmental groove central developmental groove that extends from the mesial triangular fossa to the distal triangular fossa from this uh, central developmental groove many supplementary grooves they also arise from this central developmental groove so there are two ridges and and these are present at the margins so we call them as marginal ridges so this is the mesial marginal ridge which is thick and properly developed this is the distal marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge it is thin small and it is poorly developed thank you very much for watching this lecture of the decitus maxillary first molar uh, follow us on Instagram for questions, images, and flashcards. This is our Instagram handle. Thank you very much and stay blessed.